Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your Dive Math 54 CDs. First, work the problems with me. Work every practice problem that I work and write down everything that I write down. Remember too that my practice problems, they aren't the same as the practice problems in that particular lesson that you're doing. They're similar, but they're not the same. So if you need some extra practice, do the ones in the book as well. Next, pause and rewind until you understand. This is one of the things that makes doing a lesson on a CD so much better than a live classroom is that you can rewind the teacher. You can just rewind and rewind until you understand a particular concept. So make sure and take advantage of that. Also, remember when you're working the practice problems, do a couple of them with me. Then if you think you understand how to do the next one, pause the CD, work it yourself, fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, go on to the next one. If you got it incorrect, rewind and see what you did wrong. You also need to make sure and do the facts practice, mental math, and problem solving section that's at the top of each lesson. Do one of those at least once per week. And those facts practice tests, you need to make at least a 90% or greater on those. Otherwise, you need to do them again. You should also time yourself on those facts practice tests and try to beat your previous time. Also remember to do all the problems in every problem set and also do all the tests that are in the test booklet and there are instructions in the test booklet as to when to take those tests. It's also important in Math 5.4 to show your work. You'll be doing lots of problems with multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction and you need to write down the steps and so you can see clearly how you're solving those problems. Don't use a calculator though. There's no need for a calculator at all in Math 5.4. So you can just leave your calculator alone and you can use that in a later course. And finally, have a good attitude. The best math program in the world won't make a bit of difference if you don't have a good, hard-working attitude. Be thankful that you have a nice computer with speakers and a cool CD lesson to work on and to learn from. Not everybody has that advantage that you have. God has given you a great opportunity here to have an excellent education and part of it is up to you as to your attitude and what you make of this opportunity. So work hard, do your best to learn these lessons and I know that God will bless you for that. Lesson 4 is about place value and it starts on page 13. Now before you get started with this lesson there's some money manipulatives that you need to cut out. You can find these in your homeschool tests and worksheets manual and that's just a separate paperback manual and it's activity sheets one through five. There's ones, tens, and hundred dollar bills on that that you need to cut out. And then also you can use activity sheet six for helping you with properly arranging those money manipulatives. So go ahead and cut that out. Just pause the CD and, and cut out activity sheets one through six and cut out all of those dollar bills and then we'll be using those in many different lessons not just this one but several lessons to come you might even want to put the ones the tens and the hundreds in individual ziploc bags now to understand place value basically what that means is that each digit in a number it has a particular value it's in a particular place in that number and it has a particular value that's why it's in that place for example if we had the number 217. The 2, that's in the hundreds place. The 1, we say that's in the tens place. And then the 7, that's in the ones place. And let's just think about this. If we had two $100 bills, let me just draw a couple of pretend hundred dollar bills here that would be two hundred dollars now if we had one ten we could add those together two one hundred dollar bills plus one ten that would be two hundred and ten dollars and then if we added seven ones to that that would give us two hundred and seventeen dollars we could say that that equals two hundred and seventeen dollars. So money, that's helpful in helping us understand place value. 
the 2 in the number 217 has a value of 200. The 1 has a value of 10. And then the 7 has a value of 7. Using numbers or digits to represent what we just did, we could say 200 plus 10 plus 7 equals 217. So just remember that each digit in a number has a particular value to it because it's in a particular place. Now we're just talking about hundreds, tens, and ones places right now. Of course, there's thousands place, there's a ten thousands place, there's a hundred thousands place, and so on. But we're just going to learn three for right now. Let's do some practice problems now. Get your money that you cut out, get that out, and use your money to represent three hundred and seventy eight dollars and remember each digit has a particular value the three that's in the hundreds place the seven that's in the tens place and the eight is in the ones place so just think about how many hundreds you would need how many tens you would need and how many ones you would need to represent three hundred seventy eight and go ahead and lay those out so to represent $378 with the appropriate place values, we would need three hundreds. And then you would need seven $10 bills because there's a seven in the tens place. That tells you you need seven $10 bills or $70. And then you would need eight $1 bills. Using numbers to describe this addition, we would say 300 plus 70 plus 8. And then we can clearly see that the 3 in 378, it has a value of 300. The 7 has a value of 70. And then the 8 has a value of 8 itself. And all of those equal 378. Look at practice problem B. The digit 5 is in what place? And so we have three different numbers there. I want you to tell me what place value the digit 5 has in each of those numbers. So in that first one, 15, the 5 is in the 1's place, right? And so we would just say 1's for an answer. And then in the second problem there, 52, the 5 is in the 10's place. And so we would just say 10's for an answer. And then the last one, 539, the 5 is in the hundreds place. It has a value of 500 because it's in the hundreds place. And so we would write hundreds for our answer. Let's do one more problem. Look at practice problem C. Use three digits to write a number with two in the hundreds place, seven in the tens place and three in the ones place. So let's just think about that. The hundreds place, that's the first one we write. And so I'm going to write this up at the top of the board here. So we'd say two, seven, three. Two hundred seventy-three. Two is in the hundreds place, seven is in the tens place, and three is in the ones place. So just remember what place value is. That means that each digit in a number, it's in a particular place, and that place determines its value. Okay, well, that's all for lesson four.